Batman. Well, so they give it in the instructions. They give um, instructions for how to bind your boat to your radio. Mm -hmm. Now, yours obviously is already bound. Uh, mine was How bound. do you know it's bound? Uh, it won't talk to each other if it's not. Well, I've noticed I would. <laughs> How do you bind it? <laughs> There's instructions uh, it's instructions back page. Instructions oh, I know. Okay. But I have never... Um, they come pre-bound, yeah. but if you change receivers, or you change transmitter, like if you are you know ride with Nick and he throws this out of the back of your pickup going over whoopies, <laughs> <laughs> so, then, then you ain't gonna have that. Then you gotta buy a new one, yeah, and then, and then you, gotta you gotta rebind it to that boat. Okay. okay. So the boat net have to be in the on position 24/7 until you decide to unplug it. Yeah. So the boat, the only way to turn the boat off is to unplug, unplug the it. battery. So if you run a bait out and you're done running for the time being, you're gonna have to open it and unplug the battery. Just like a drone that goes up. Did you hear that? You got to turn the boat off first. And then when you go to hook this back up, the, this has the remote has to be turned on before the boat is turned and plugged in. Fix this location through GPS. So what you would do is close to the Have water. you got me in a clear you area put, to do that? You would put, no, not really. No. Uh, you would put the clo boat close to shore, wherever you want it to come back to, and then you just push your GPS on. Got it. And so your GPS on is on now. Now, if you want it to come back, you just push it for one second. Now oh. it's going to come back. And the way to stop it is just throttle or, or turn. Any input you do is going to kill your auto return. And then you're, you're doing it. So I will say in the instructions, and uh, are most people here going to use it in the surf or just flat? Surf. Okay, so I've run it into two foot waves. I haven't, they say three foot, but I just haven't run it in three foot waves. Um, the, and they do say in the instructions, if you read all of it, that they recommend returning it yourself. Uh, the reason being is so... return to home the boat doesn't know which way the waves are coming it's just going to go straight line try to get back to that spot you marked on the gps so if it gets sideways to the wave it's going to get sideways it can turn over it will ride itself i've done it several times um, and then it's going to try and turn itself back so there's a little learning curve you know if you're driving your car and you're, you start to turn keep your foot on the gas you're going to turn going the same speed with this you're not when you go to turn it's going to slow down because it's killing a motor well it's actually turning one motor backwards and one front and so there's a bit of a learning curve on how to steer it uh, four of them together we have this with airplanes we've had 50 airplanes in the air at one time but each one has their own unique signal so it rejects all the other signals it only accepts that signal from your radio so you could have 20 of them, I guess, probably in the same area, and it shouldn't be a problem. Now, I noticed once when we were filming originally, if we hung, when the weight was on it, it would go through bigger waves. Well, like it just yeah. sits. Well, if you have the weight back here, of course, it's going to move your yeah. CG back here. Right. And so it's going to make Center it of gravity. Front light in the front. And so if you hang the weight here from the middle, it's going to center your, your. I think that's what. That's the one I saw, was that we hung it in the middle. Yeah, so I've done it all ways. I've put bait in here. I've run the bait from out back here. I've run the bait from the center. It will do all of them. Which is if the I most taking, efficient? Well, if I was taking a bigger bait, I would, which would require a bigger weight, I would use the center. If I'm just taking a pompano rig with shrimp and fish bites on it, I'm gonna stick it on the back. 
I probably put my one of my hooks in here and leave one out so they don't get tangled and just send it. And then where do you tie the uh, line to? When you're, no, the when clip. You're, when, you're, I know, but when you're sending it, your pompano rig and your setup is in here and you're putting it in here and you leave one hook out. Are you hooking just, it under here? I would just hook my weight right here. I'll just leave the, the hook hanging. Put my weight in here. In, in between this point here. Uh -huh. And what do you use this one for? Oh, nothing. You don't have to use them all every time. Well, I, yeah. okay. Or you can do that one and this one. Yeah. Whichever way you want to do it. So you hang your weight off that and you can hang your rig off that. Whatever is or easier for you. So one right here if it was a small one. So a lot of times I'm fishing by myself. Dangle a big whiting head and when the black tip comes by, you can say goodbye to the boat. There you <laughs> go. You eat this, eat this bait and away Just it is. turn the knob and like come a off. I think we need a bigger boat. Uh, <laughs> I'm fishing by myself a lot. <laughs> 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 it's advantageous to have more than one person because you know, you've got to hook all this up and you're holding the radio or, you know, you don't want to set it down in the sand. That's what I figured out to do. Even by yourself, it's certainly doable. You can hook all this up. Right. Carry it back out there. And how do the four point conversions work? And actually, I have never used them, but let me see. To a location, you want to mark as the first fishing spot, press one of the four positioning. Yes. Which is one of these right here. One, two, three, four. Uh, you have to press it for five seconds, and then one of these green lights will come on, whichever one you marked. So it takes you right back to that same spot. That's great for pompano, because they're real isolated. So if you find them on a sandbar, you want to send it right to the same spot. manually drive it out there to get it close and no. then, then no it goes to it it should go by itself okay. let's go I don't let it go out okay it, get, it won't it yawn over and roll into a head sea just like a regular boat if you're in a back roll or you got a stern wave that'll pitch cooler to roll it to yawn and then it'll spin it and roll it and then it'll come back up right. just like a regular boat in the ocean so when, you, when it's out to sea and it's coming in, it's recommended to manually drive it back. It's going to so, come straight back then. So when I, I'm, I have it here and I want to send it to the same spot I just left, I push the button and I don't manually drive it to the spot. No. I just let it do its own no. thing. So what would be the difference in the operation of the boat to go from out to in as it is from in to out? You're going to go to the same spot. I know. No, no. Well, you're not going to do it if you manually drive it. Well, you're going to man. I'm just asking because I, you in can, order to manually drive it in, you're taking the boat and getting it in more efficiently. Yes. Okay. So if I'm going to just turn it on and say automatically go there, I'm going to watch it flip and get into the waves, or do I manually push it out? There? Can you drive it halfway out there? Then and, the and well, then you, push you the, certainly can. You you could be half. You could get beyond the waves. You know. Especially if you have a lot of choppy wind. It's just like a car. Point folks. Yeah, there goes the warranty. It's got wet. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
got was a wind knot caught on the tip and it pulled the tip off. Okay. All right, now wind knot is sometimes caused by ha on spinning reels by having too much line on the spool. Let me have a look. You might need to take a bit off, all right? Okay. But what I want you to do is wind that in. But that's what caused it. You've got a wind knot grabbed here, look, and pulled the tip off during the car, see it? Yeah. That's that what it looks like it's bent forward a little bit. Yeah, but it's nothing to do with forcing it down. Do not force your tip down, otherwise you'll get it stuck and it won't be able to come apart. All right? <laughs> I'm just showing them this. So it's just a straight old overhand in the thick line. And then we go through with the thin line. Through that. Right? You're gonna pull that cinch that down. And then you do what's called a uni. And all you do is make a loop. And then you go around both. Four lines. If you go around five, it's not gonna hurt, right? Then you just cinch that up, spit on it, and bring the two together, and then tie them down. And once you've got it, try and cut it as close as you can. Then start winding. So that's your shot leader knot. 